On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Martin will show us how you can write an app using UWP XAML and have it run not only on Windows 10, but also iOS, and also Android, and also the web. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today from the Czech Republic is Martin Zygmunt. Hello, Martin. How are you? Hello. Hello. Thanks for joining us on the Thanks for joining us on the show today. All right. I met Martin at the DevReach conference in Sofia a few weeks back, and he was giving a talk on Uno. And I had heard about Uno, and I thought this would be a perfect thing to do a show on. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's a very nice framework, and it has many interesting features for mobile developers and web developers. So give us an over, a quick overview of what Uno is. Yeah, so Uno is basically a, a framework for building cross-platform uh, mobile and web applications. And it allows you to do that with a single code base. So you are sharing all of your code across all the platforms, and you don't have to write anything twice. And is that just the C-sharp code? It's, it's more than that, right? Yeah, it's basically a combination of C-sharp and XAML. And it's the XAML dialect of UWP, so Windows platform, universal Windows platform, which is ported across all the platforms at once. So Uno platform is basically a bridge of universal Windows platform to Android, iOS, and WebAssembly. So, so if I do Xamarin Forms, for example, I write the XAML once, and it runs across iOS, Android, and Windows. You're yes. saying that with Uno, I write UWP type XAML, and it runs in obviously Windows, but also iOS, Android, and the web. Exactly, yes. Wow. That's, That's the goal. <laughs> That's quite a promise. Does it work? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> it does work. Of course it sure. does, or we wouldn't be doing this show. <laughs> OK, so give us a look at it. All right. So I will share my screen. And again, yeah. this is a framework, so it's freely downloadable. It's open source, all the things yeah. you'd expect. Mm -hmm. OK. So first thing we'll do is launch Visual Studio. And we will create a new project. And I will first show you how to install the Uno platform extension before you create a new project. So if you go to Manage Extensions, and you search for Uno Platform, you should find Uno Platform Solution Templates. And this extension is downloadable for free and installable into Visual Studio 2019. Cool. So once you do that, you get some new templates for your projects. And I do this. Oh, sorry. So you get two different uh, templates. One is cross-platform application for Uno platform, and one is cross-platform library. And the most interesting is, of course, the application one, which allows you to create a new project. Um, I will do a sample here. And it basically creates um, a solution with four platform heads, which is WebAssembly, iOS, and Android and UWP. Yeah, so you get and, WebAssembly f out of the box. Interesting. Yeah, so you get Droid, iOS, UWP, and WebAssembly, and one shared project, which is the project where you will have the most of your code. So that's the basic uh, layout of a Uno platform solution. So shared projects, we first saw, saw those in, universe, in UWP, Universal Windows Platform. Yeah. Xamarin was originally using them, but then they moved over to uh, PCLs and, and then over to, to .NET Standard Library. Um, I see Uno is still using shared. I assume that eventually it would move over? Well, basically, you have both of those options. You can build your application with a .NET Standard Library, uh, which is shared across all those platforms, mm -hmm. and you can have the shared project. Okay. But the the advantage of shared projects in case of Uno platform is that you can put your XAML files there, which are then shared across all the 
um, or the platforms, which is not easily done in uh, .NET standard projects. So the advantage here is especially for the XAML part. Okay. As well, you have the assets, and the assets like images can be also shared across all the projects. And if you do it in the shared project, it's done uh, automatically for you. So okay. it's advantageous to keep it there. Uh, I will just open uh, the same project here I have prepared. So it's basically the same solution, just I pre-cached the build, so it doesn't take so long. Okay. Uh, so, so the basic layout is just a simple UWP application. So you have this main page XAML, which looks just like a normal UWP application. And when we launch this in UWP, it should launch and show us a window with UWP project. So let's see. So this is just a basic UWP application. Okay. Yeah. And we can now develop our UWP application as we normally do. So when I open this, I get the designer just like normally. And I can do things like um, put a stack panel here and add a slider with some name, for example, slider. And I can do a text block. And I can use, for example, data binding to show that it's all interactive. So like this, you will get a text block, make it a little bit better, uh, bigger and add a padding to make it more visible. So if I launch this, I should get a slider that is data bound to a text block and the text box will show show the current value of the slider. So if mm -hmm. I slide, I get the value there. So nothing really special here, it's just UWP. Okay. And that's the basic workflow. You just start with your UWP and build your application. And then you switch to another platform and run it there. So let's do, for example, Android. So I will launch the emulator. <clears throat> and in a few moments, we should get the same experience here on the emulator. In the meantime, I can show you that uh, in the platform project heads, there is nothing much special. There is just like basic activity that launches Uno platform and nothing much else. So most of your code will be in the shared project or in a shared library. Hmm. So here is, here is the same example running in Android. And as you can see, the slider works exactly the same way as on UWP. Wow. And it even reacts to orientation changes. So, okay, not this way, but. <laughs> oh, I've locked the orientation. Yeah, this way. Yeah, <laughs> that's better. Okay. So it's the exact same thing as, as in UWP. And yeah, so. So basically, was, you could, you could yeah. take an existing UWP app and mm -hmm. <clears throat> essentially, without changing it, be able to run it on these multiple platforms. Exactly. Yeah. That's the goal. That's the goal of Uno Platform is to have a one-to-one -one compatibility with Uno Plat uh, UWP XAML. So mm -hmm. when you take your existing UWP application, take your XAML and copy paste it in Uno Platform, it will just work. And then. So that's that's the ultimate goal. And similar to what Xamarin is doing, it's taking your C Sharp code, your XAML, and compiling it into something native and doing a mapping from C Sharp XAML speak into iOS speak and Android speak. And then. Yeah, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's right. how is it different than Xamarin? Yeah, I will definitely show you that. Okay. It's a very interesting thing. So, like, uh, Xamarin forms is also XAML. So you would think that's the same thing. Why do something that's also already created? So uh, the reason is this is the full XAML of UWP. Mm -hmm. So you can do things like 
uh, create a image button, which is not easily done in Xamarin Forms. As in Xamarin Forms, your button has just a text property, and you can just enter some uh, text into the button, which is not very flexible, as you cannot compose your button of other controls. And in comparison, in Uno platform, you can do something like this. So you can take your content and put an image there, for example. This way. And as you can see, hmm. we have basically an image button in just five lines of code. So okay. that's super easy. And if you wanted to do the same thing in Xamarin Forms, it would take you a lot of work. Got so it. this is, I think, the main advantage of Uno Platform is you have more flexible and composable XAML at your disposal. And then if you've already been doing UWP and you're already familiar with UWP XAML, then you don't have to go learn a new XAML. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the goal. Okay. And you can even even take your existing applications and easily port them to, ex uh, to other platforms without too much additional work. Okay. Um, I will just show you this running in iOS as well. So you can see that the um, UI is exactly the same on all platforms and you don't have to care about like changing paddings and um, changing colors and things. So if you want to have, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's interesting because I've heard other people talk about that as well. Is that a Benefit? Do we literally want the UI to look exactly the same on all platforms, or do we want a UWP app to look like it's a UWP app and a, an iOS app look like it's an iOS app, etc.? Yeah. Well, it depends on the specific project you are working on. So, if you are working on a, a project uh, that uh, benefits from having a native user experience mm -hmm. and fam familiarity of the platform then it's easier for you to start with Xamarin Forms, probably as you will get the native look and feel uh, directly. Right. But Uno Platform itself gives, it gives you the same experience across all the platforms, and that's also beneficial when you okay. want, want to introduce your company branding or uh, you want to make your application just look pixel perfect the same on all platforms. Right. And that becomes more and more the requirement of many uh, companies to get like the UI the same so that it's easily uh, replicable and uh, the experience is, is the same and familiar for the user. Okay. But you are not limited. You can even change the UI of the, the uh, Uno platform controls to match the specific native platforms. That's also possible and uh, there is nothing stopping you from doing that. Okay. So you have like the full flexibility here. Got it. Yeah. So we can see there's a button we created and the slider also working here. Mm -hmm. And that's for iOS. But the final, the, the biggest advantage of Uno platform is the WebAssembly part. And that's probably the most extraordinary thing as you just launch your UWP application in WebAssembly. And once it does launch, we should see the same experience running in the browser and rendered on the client. So there is no server side uh, there. You just download the libraries and it runs in the client. So uh, hopefully it will start up. And so then this is a XAML app running in the browser using WebAssembly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can see that there are some DLs downloaded. Mm -hmm. So we can see here things like uh, system DLL and uh, various system mm -hmm. numerics and so on. And yeah, sorry. Yeah. And now it should launch. And as you can see, the same experience huh. with the same UI running in the browser. And when I delete these, you can see there is no network communication going on. Mm -hmm. So it's all running in the client. And um, 
that works the same way even on a phone. So you can open this application on a phone and it will work the same way. Really? Interesting. Yeah. So that's the coolest part probably that you can run your applications in the browser and you don't have to touch JavaScript at all. So that's, <laughs> that's I think, a big advantage for many C-sharp developers who don't really like JavaScript, that they can now target the web without knowing JavaScript at all. So to run it on a mobile, well, I guess you'd have to, you'd have to design it to begin with to work well on phones, and then it just runs the same way in the browser on the phone, right? Yeah, that's right. So then what's, the, ad what's the advantage then to running it in the mobile browser versus as a mobile app? Well, the advantage can be that you don't have to install the application. Okay. You can just browse to the URL where the application is hosted, mm -hmm. and you launch it, and you just use it, and ju then you go somewhere else. And there is nothing left in your device after that. After mm -hmm. your cache is cleared, there is nothing left after the application. So mm -hmm. that's probably the most interesting thing for mobile users, that you can use applications which have more features than right. normal website, but you don't have, to, don't have to install them. And then you could easily determine whether somebody is running this on a PC or a Surface device yes, yes. versus a mobile this, device yeah. and then have a broader, a bigger UI um, yes. for some platforms than others, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have the full XAML at your right. disposal, you have also the adaptive triggers from UWP. Yep. So you can change the layout of your page depending on the breakpoints in your view size. Yep. So that's kind of similar to CSS media queries. So you just decide when to change, and then you switch uh, the layout, change the lists to grids, and so on. Yep. Yep. So yeah. great. So if it's running on Windows 10 um, on a device, you would have the UI look one way if it's running on iOS or Android. Um, you'd have it look a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can decide uh, hmm. based on the OS. You can decide based on the UI size, uh, like the display size, yep. and so on. So we have the full flexibility, and you can even easily introduce native controls from Android and iOS into your XAML, and just use native controls and communicate with them via your, via your uh, XAML code. So mm, cool. that's also cool. I can show one more thing here uh, that's kind of new, but it's pretty interesting. So if I go to settings and change my theme to dark, it's because developers like dark. So when I launch the application now, Something will change. As you can see, <laughs> the application detected that my OS is running dark theme and it's now also dark. So and that's running across all the platforms. So in iOS, when you change to dark mode, you have dark application and in Android as well. And you don't have to do anything else in addition because that's already built in the UWP platform. So you have the dark theme there. And if you don't uh, customize your UI, you just can use the default uh, UI and switch between those themes automatically. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> so again, this is a free download. It's just an extension you put into Visual Studio. You get uh, you know, platform templates to create mm -hmm. apps. And then it looks pretty similar to what UWP was when it first came out, where you would have um, the desktop version of the app and the mobile version of the app, um, shared code, shared XAML across. Looks very similar to what Xamarin's doing. Um, so it should be a familiar paradigm to anybody that's built cross-platform applications recently. Right. Um, but it, again, uses UWP XAML, and it adds WebAssembly. It's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So we'll stop here to keep this a 20-minute episode. Um, and in the, in the next episode, uh, Martin will show us some more uh, complicated, more uh, interesting demos. Sound good? All right. All right.
So hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.